So Avid has come out with a new version of Pro Tools, Pro Tools Intro. It's a free version of Pro Tools that you can keep forever. It's replacing the old Pro Tools first um, that they discontinued around the end of 2021. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what Avid is offering with, with Pro Tools Intro and the main differences between post Pro Tools Intro and Pro Tools First. So a quick overview of what you can do with Pro Tools Intro. You can record, you can edit MIDI, um, you can mix and you can master your music or podcast in exactly the same way that you would in, in the full version of Pro Tools. They're just some features that are missing or not so robust, but the main features that you need to get started and get learning Pro Tools are still there, just like with Pro Tools First. It's very clear, clear now why they discontinue Pro Tools first, because Pro Tools intro seems to fit more within the ecosystem, in, within the new Pro Tools subscription ecosystem. And you'll see how in just a moment. So I'm not gonna go over every single detail um, of what's different. Firstly, because the Pro Tools first information isn't available anymore, but also I'll leave the link to the full comparison so you can see every little feature that comes with, with Pro Tools intro versus the other version of Pro Tools. But I'm just gonna go over main things that I've picked up that are different in Pro Tools intro from Pro Tools first. So firstly, it's the way that you install and license the software. So you, you install it pretty much the same way as you would with any version of Pro Tools. Um, you set up your account, add it to your, add it to your Avid products library uh, and install it through Avid Link. But the main difference here with intro versus first is something that caused a, a real problem for me because I wanted to install both versions. I've already got Pro Tools Studio installed on my PC. I wanted to install intro side by side, just like I did with first when I put together the Pro Tools first course. But if you look on Avid Link where you can see your products, I've got Pro Tools first license there, and then I've got Pro Tools there. Now, when I installed Pro Tools intro, it didn't come up with a separate license for Pro Tools intro. What it did, was it just replaced Pro Tools Studio. And I tried to update it and it just wouldn't load Pro, the full version of Pro Tools anymore. So I had to mess around uninstalling everything, finding the old installer 22.5 for Pro Tools that I had and just reinstalling from scratch. So you can't load these side by side. Not that you'd likely want to other than for comparison reasons, um, but I think Avid want people to start with Pro Tools intro and then then update um, to Pro Tools Studio on their subs new subscription service, which um, is a little overpriced. So it's good that they do have the free option at least. I did contact Avid about this problem and they said, yeah, whichever the newest version is on your iLock, on the, the, the thing that holds your licenses, it will install that version. So I had to get intro off of my iLock as well. But now looking at more on the actual features of Pro Tools intro, the biggest improvement over Pro Tools first that I found was the plugins side of things. So it includes 36 plugins um, and it has a list of all the plugins included there. You've got pretty much everything you need to get started and learn how to mix. The uh, Pro Tools first only had 23. So it's quite a significant increase in the amount of free plugins you get with it. And also it, you can load up your AAX plugins into it. So when I launched Pro Tools intro, it came up with all my plugins, all my third party waves plugins and uh, native instruments, so on. So you can use third party plugins on there by the looks of things with Pro Tools first. It only let you um, use the plugins it came with and also anything downloaded directly from the Avid marketplace. The file system also seems to be more in line with the standard Pro Tools now. With Pro Tools first, you had to use the cloud to save your projects and you couldn't store that many sessions on there. Whereas on Pro Tools Intro, you can load up Pro Tools sessions as normal as you would um, with, with the normal versions of Pro Tools. The user interface has changed a little bit. It's got some um, extra buttons, extra toolbars. There's now a quantize toolbar that you can see up there so you can easily quantize things. I think they're put, putting more focus on, on the MIDI side of things now or trying to improve the MIDI side of things. Uh, and the, the interface just generally looks a little bit more like the main versions of Pro Tools. There's also at the bottom, you can see there's a Melodyne button for Melodyne integration. You do need to have a, a license for Melodyne to use it though. 
for, for your vocal tuning. So those are the main important features that I've picked up. If you need help getting started and learning how to use Pro Tools intro, I'm gonna leave a link in the description for my Pro Tools first full course because it goes over everything and it works in almost exactly the same way. You just have a few more plugins and things at your disposal with Pro Tools intro. I'm glad that Avid's bought it back, the free version, when it canceled Pro Tools first, it was quite disappointing. Um, especially with with the expensive subscription offers offers they have on now. It is still robust enough to do podcasts on. You could record a, a singer-songwriter or even a small band because you've got eight audio tracks available plus eight instrument and MIDI tracks available. So there's more than enough to get you going and giving you a feel for using Pro Tools before you splash out. Um, see if it's the right DAW for you. Let me know in the comment section below, have you installed Pro Tools intro and what do you think of it? And for more audio software videos and tips and tricks on recording, mixing and production, just hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.